Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on understanding bounding functions in safety critical UAV software. I'm Xiao Zhou Liang from State University of New York at Binghamton, and I'm glad to share our story with you in the following 10 minutes. Our story starts with this safety critical flying computer. UAVs, which are usually referred to as drones, are called a flying computer system as its software stack has been significantly enriched nowadays. Meanwhile, we should attach great importance to the safety criticality of UAVs, considering that any crash of the UAV is not only a computer safety problem, but also a public safety hazard. Our study is the first developer in the field in empirical study on the safety critical components of UAV software in a real world code base based on bounding functions. We focus on physical variables such as the UAV's trajectory, pose, speed, which are the UAV parameters reflecting their cyber physical nature. They are closely connected to the UAV safety in a sense that UAVs are cyber-physical systems interacting with the physical world. As a broad definition, any behavior that deviates from the intended cyber-physical behavior is considered as a safety violation. In this sense, the need to bound these physical variables within a reasonable range is self-evident. For example, an excessive high speed will be a risk for the UAV, and more critically, a risk for public safety. In our empirical study, we take a two-pronged approach to explore the bonding functions in paparazzi. Statically, we identify all bonding function instances in the source code and provide a detailed data type-based taxonomy of them. And dynamically, we perform a differential simulation to illustrate the impact of bounding function uses in UAV behavior. At the bottom right is a picture of the paparazzi simulator that we use for the differential simulation. As the software framework serving as the focus of our empirical study, paparazzi is an open source UAV project that provides unified software support from autopilot to ground station with diverse support for multi-copters, fixed wing, helicopters, and hybrid aircraft. More than 100 developers are actively contributing to this project, and now it has more than 4,000 files and 350,000 lines of code. We focus on how bounding functions are applied on, on physical variables in the paparazzi autopilot software. And here's an example. The function bound is a bounding function, and the first argument gv underscore z underscore ref is a bounded variable. We will use their abbreviations bf and bv in the following slides. Firstly, let's understand bf in a static approach. To start with, let's see how we identify bfs in the paparazzi codebase. We developed a compiler pass implemented as a clamp plugin called PBF Detector, which is short for Paparazzi Bounding Function Detector. We manually selected 19 predefined BFs in the form of C macros by inspecting all .h files. PBF Detector is makefile aware and is invoked in Paparazzi's hierarchical compilation with 78 CMIC files distributed at various levels. After identifying the BF instances using PBF detector, let's, there's an interesting observation that the BAVs fall into a small set of physical variables. For example, a large number of flow type variables representing the pose of a UAV, which are the pitch, the row, and the yaw. From the view of abstract data type, these float values indeed logically encapsulate the floating number and a specification on what a pitch, a row, or yaw parameter should conform to. And in this study, we will classify our BF instances based on the logical data types of their corresponding BVs. Overall, 
our data type based taxonomy can be summarized as not all floating values are created equal. By refining them into data types, their logical roles in UAV software start to emerge. Here's the detailed data type based taxonomy. We identified 109 BF instances that are directly related to the UAV safety and classified them into five categories shown in the first column, which are the management of trajectory, sensor, speed and acceleration, injury, and pulse. And within each category, we perform an in-depth analysis on how BFs are used in paparazzi, defined as use scenarios in the second column. For example, under the post management category, the pitch row your data types have more specific use scenarios such as safe post change rate and safe post maintenance. This is an example of the use scenario safe heading change under category trajectory management. Paparazzi follows the carrot based approach for circle navigation. As is shown in the bottom right figure, a virtual continuously updated waypoint is used to guide the next movement of the UAV, similar to using a carrot to attract a mule to move forward. And carrot underscore angle represents the UAV's heading change in the next time interval. The BF highlighted in the code snippet bounds the carrot angle change within the range between pi 16s and pi 4s. This BF instance is necessary considering that a drastic change in heading may affect the stability of the UAV as well as the correctness of the circle trajectory. After studying BF statically, let's perform simulations to understand BFs in a dynamic approach. We use Paparazzi's built-in simulator to simulate a UAV's flight based on a flight plan which is essentially an XML document describing how you want your aircraft to travel. For each simulatable BF instance, we perform two experiments. The first one is a simulation of the autopilot with a predefined flight plan, where the code with the BF instance is called, while the second one is a simulation with the same flight plan, but the BF is removed. There are 30 out of 64 simulatable instances producing different results when comparing executions with or without BFs. These differences reflect on physical variables including positions, altitude, course, pose, and speed. We can see that the BFs indeed play an important role in safeguarding the correctness of programs and consequently the safety of UAVs. Let's take a look at the differential simulation on the carrot angle BF instance we discussed before. As is shown in the bottom left figure, with the safeguard of the BF, the UAV circles around normally and the red actual trajectory fits nicely with the green desired trajectory. However, if we remove the BF, as is shown in the bottom right figure, the red actual trajectory is irregular at the beginning and later follows a stable oval orbit. This deviation stems from the drastic carrier angle variation. Okay, the 10 minute story of BFs and UAVs is coming to an end and let's wrap it up now. Our study adopts a two pronged approach statically we proposed a data type based taxonomy on 109 BF instances and further classified them into 5 categories and 19 use scenarios. And dynamically, we performed differential simulations to analyze the impact of BFs in a quantitative method and 30 out of 64 of the simulatable instances produced different results. And a contribution of this study is our tool PBF detector developed for automatically identifying BF instances in a real-world codebase with complex compilation schemes. That's all of our presentation. Thanks for your listening. We are back again. Uh, this is the Q Q&A session for the last paper in the session. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I am here with Xiao Zong Liang and he is ready to answer your questions. Uh, we got a question on the chat from James um, and he's asking uh, on the simulation summary slide, you say the BFs provide safety, but the evidence on the slide is instead that BFs affect behavior. Did you measure the number of cases where the changed behavior was unsafe? And if you measured it, how it, how it was measured? Okay, so firstly, thank you for the question. Um, so in the simulation, uh, what we were showing is the Pearson's correlation coefficients, which is a uh, criteria to measure the linear uh, coefficients between two data sets, right? So in this case, uh, we compare the, the, the simulation results with BF and without BF, which is basically a A-B testing. So, and we also know that 0 0.7 is a, like a golden standard for a strong uh, coefficient. So in this case, we can see that just a, a few, so most of the PCC is below 0.7, which means that uh, removing the BF really make a difference to the UAV's behavior, like in terms of the positions and altitude and pose, things like that. So I would say that's a, a evidence for for the BF's uh, impact in the UAV's behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. There is another question from Na. Uh, why did you choose to evaluate how BFs affect behaviors? Is there any any other uh, app is uh, similar to BF that can be investigated in similar ways? Oh, that's a that's a interesting question. So, um, so it's more about like the motivation why we uh, research into bonding functions. Uh, so, so at the very beginning, uh, it interests us because there there are multiple occurrence in the paparazzi code base that they bond something within a given range, which is the definition of bonding function that we, that's the center of our research. And, and so that's, that's pretty much uh, related to the nature of the safety criticality of UAV. Because one example that I mentioned in the presentation is an excessive speed would jeopardize the the uh, UAV in some scenarios so that that motivates us to do this research and what you are asking is about is there other um, other API that's similar to bounding functions uh, I would say that's a great opportunity to explore in the future and also uh, our lab is still working on, actively working on this uh, project. So I would love to see if there's any new aspects. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is another question from James. Was it necessary to create the taxonomy? Are these characteristics undocumented? Correct. Yeah, so yeah, they are documented and is posted on our uh, GitHub repository. And I could uh, share the link later. And as for the necessity of the taxonomy, I was I would argue that it is necessary to to uh, to classify them. So we believe that this this taxonomy is is useful for future UAV control software as they will still need to like fundamentally interact with the physical world, right? And the behavior 
and the manner that the UAV interact with the world is still similar. They will need to like navigate. They will need to control their navigation. They will need to understand their surroundings uh, via sensors. They will still need to understand their orientation, understand their locomotion, which is uh, connect, uh, which is like strongly connected to our taxonomy. So as our study shows, the vast majority of finding functions in paparazzi revolve around these five types. And this cannot be accidental, I believe. These five types um, are essential to the nature of UAV software. So I, I would say it's still necessary. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There is also two questions from Sebastian. The first one is, uh, bounding functions are present in all software. Are they different or more frequent in, in domain like this one? And what are the lessons learned from this study uh, from the developers and researchers uh, in this field? Mm. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, are they different or more frequent? Uh, I, I can't I can 100% sure how if it's more frequent than other types of uh, uh, software. So, so yeah, but I would say in in paparazzi codebase itself, it is uh, very frequent. Like as we we talked about in the presentation, we found over two hundred. 241 bounding function cases uh, in the whole code base. So that's a pretty huge amount of number. And the second one is what are the lessons learned from the study? Okay, uh, so the lessons are uh, all the bounding functions that we found forced into these five categories and as I just mentioned, it shouldn't be accidental because it is strongly connected to the nature of the UAV. And for the future researchers on UAV or even like the language designer, uh, it would be a, a good way to think of the, when you think of the safety criticality of UAV, you could focus on these five um, aspects so that uh, from, from your research, from your design, you can keep in mind the safety criticality and to like further prevent any public hazard in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We go, yeah, we, we still have time for more questions. Uh, have you also tried to experiment in the field or, or only in simulation? Uh, unfortunately, uh, we haven't tried tried in the field because uh, as you as you see, uh, this this kind of A/B testing is kind of risky to really do that in the field, right? Like uh, like a excessive speed that will really uh, bring in some possible uh, public risk. So. We, we cannot do that in the field. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the last questions, do you think that bounding functions that you identified are essential in the system? Do developers tend to add more bounding functions because of the nature of the systems? Or have you identified other parts of the source code that could be benefited with bounding functions? Uh, so the first question. Uh, so if you don't have time, uh, then you can follow up with this, those questions and discuss it then in the discussion rooms for this uh, for this room for okay, this talk. Cool. Yeah. So again, thank you so much, guys, for the valuable questions, and I will try my best to answer them in the discussion room. Then, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for attending this session.